Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Brad over here at Chattanooga Fish and Fun. Here at Chattanooga Fish and Fun, we sell Ranger boats and Lance campers. Been a minute since I uploaded, so I decided I better get back on track here so everybody can see what we got. So uh, today we're gonna be checking out this beautiful 2024 Lance 1172. This is Lance's largest truck camper in production right now. Uh, this one comes in weighing at 4,561 pounds dry the way that this one's equipped So you know that you're going to need the long bed dually for this. That's going to be your 350 3500 450 series long bed eight foot dual rear wheel trucks So uh, big camper big truck needed This one comes in also base price of eighty four thousand eighty four dollars factory options destination charge brings you a total msrp of ninety seven thousand seven hundred and fifteen dollars and seventy five cents so of course that's going to be your msrp pricing if you're uh, interested in one of these model campers you can give me a call at 423-892-6272 and i'd love to hook you up with a bsrp price before you go buy used or anything like that at least call me at least get a price from me uh, it might surprise you how close we are to uh, used pricing. So before you go and do that, at least give me a chance to earn your business. So uh, on with the little tour here, we're going to start on the uh, inside of the camper. But first, I wanted to show you what it looks like with the slides in. Everybody's first question on this uh, large side entry double slide camper is can you access the inside of the camper with the rear uh, with the slides in? I think it's kind of obvious what the answer is, but I'm going to show you anyways. No, absolutely not. You're not getting anywhere with this rear slide out in. Even the side slide has to be uh, extended out, so if you don't have a minute to spare, this may not be the camper for you. But uh, as you can see, not getting around underneath or on top of this thing to get in there. I've got my old handy dandy charge box here, booster box, whatever you want to call it. We're going to run this slide out here real quick. All right, so as you can see here, we got the rear slide out out now. When you walk in, that's where your two batteries are gonna go. You can do a dual lithium upgrade through the factory. A lot of people skip on that because they charge you $2,595 retail on them batteries. By the time you know you pay the sale price, you're not actually paying that for the batteries, but uh, it's an expensive upgrade and people usually find them cheaper elsewhere. But uh, as you can see here, still not gaining access to the bathroom, the fridge, or the bed with this side slide in. So this has got to go out. Let's do that. Just look how close they park me to these things. I mean, I got like an inch or two to spare there. Maybe three inches actually. But anyways, when we go to the outside, I'm going to have to run that back in so we can at least do a full walk around. But that's crazy. Come on, I'm doing videos over here. We got to get some space. So as we walk inside the camper, you're going to notice all of your switches are over here for your exterior lights, entry light here, docking lights, backup camera, and the uh, slide. Uh, down here, you're going to have the little switch that turns the power off to the slide, but you know you don't really need to know all that in the video. That's more so if you're buying it and about to use it. But uh, see, you have the side entry here, and then you have the couch here in the back. This is kind of like a futon style couch. Let me move that remote. This actually pulls out and you can use it for more storage space. Every little bit of storage matters inside of a truck camper. You're gonna find out. Well, let me pull out a little bit more. This is really hard to do with a camera in your hand. But uh, the jackknife sofa folds out into a bed. And then when we lift this back up and push it in, hey, no, hold please. All right, got it put back. You have these little kickouts for your feet. It's not a recliner by any means. It's kind of just a awkward little footrest, as you can see there. But it works. It's nice to have. People would complain if you didn't have it. So there you have it. Got a little bit of storage over here for all your Doritos and Gatorades and extra beers and whiskey and stuff. Up here, that's where I get all of my accurate weights. It says 4,962 pounds with factory installed options, 
propane and water. You take away the water and propane, that's 429 pounds and that gives you your dry weight. Then you got a little bit more storage under here. You can use these as uh, pantries too. And then we've got mood switches on both of the slide outs right there and same over there. Now looking at this, let me get that box out of the way. Okay, I moved the box out of the way. That way everything's nice and clear over here. So this one right here is gonna be your bronzite interior. You have bronzite, you have Grayson and Lapis to choose from for your 2024 model still. So 2022 to 24, you have the same interior option choices. Uh, this one's gonna be your bronzite. This is the gray and brown mixture. Uh, Lapis is gonna be gray and blue. And then Grayson is all gray, everything. All the, all the trim around the windows and all that good stuff. So like I said, this is gonna be your bronzite interior. Bronzite and generally Grayson is gonna be the most popular choices. So this dinette also actually makes into a bed. When you have it converted into a bed, you're looking at 44 inches by 72 inches. And I will get that folded down here for you here shortly. That way you can see it. Underneath the dinette or underneath the bench, you have these two pull-out drawers. And like I said, every little bit of storage in these campers is important. So I have a lot of people come in here and the first thing they want to do is sit here and rip on it. And even though it doesn't open, they pull harder. All you do is hit that button, that unlocks it, then you can pull it out. And then you just hit that button to lock it again. If something doesn't immediately open on the first pull, that doesn't mean pull harder. And we have the optional bunk bed above the dinette. I think that's maybe a three or $400 option that you can add on this model. Um, and this one's got it. A lot of people use it for extra storage as it holds up to 200 pounds. And then people with uh, uh, you know, kids that like to go with them, kids will use that as somewhere awesome to sleep. So I'll get that folded down and make this into a bed and show you that real quick. All right, so this is what we're looking at on uh, sleeping arrangements. You have so much sleeping capability inside this camper. You could do two in the bed, two over here on the dinette, one up in the bed area there, one on the uh, little jackknife sofa. So that's what, two, four, six people that you can sleep inside of this camper. Uh, realistically, for me and my family, probably two in the bed, brother here, brother there. That's about it, so about four for us. Plus the Dane, she can sleep in the floor. I'll get her a nice little doggy bed or something to sleep on. But anyways, yeah, this one's got the most sleeping capability and most places to rest your head at night uh, out of all the uh, truck camper models. Like I said, that's 44 by 72 inches. And then up here, this is a 200 pound weight capacity. You can fold this out right here. Make sure that your kid does not go falling out of it at nighttime or if you're using it for extra storage while towing, this will keep it up or keep it from falling out. And then you also have this plastic plate back here that blocks the window so nothing goes crashing through the window either. One more thing I wanna point out over here is the day and night shades. You have the day shades, a lot of people use as bug screens because these windows open up so far and I would be able to show you that if I had more room over there, but I don't. And then you have your nightshades. Keep out all the peepers. So they won't be able to look in on you. But that is what you would refer to as a standard feature. That's no upgrade that you have to pay extra for or anything. It's actually included in that nearly $100,000 MSRP price. So, thank goodness. Um, over here is going to be where your kitchen's at. Towards the back door. But uh, anyways, you can do this uh, 1172 one of two ways. You can get it with the microwave and the uh, three burner stove top and oven option, or you can do a convection microwave, which deletes the top microwave there and gives you another storage door. And you get the uh, three burner stove top with the convection microwave below it, no oven. So one of two ways you can do that. This is our most popular setup. So that's how we continue to order, order them. Uh, if you did want the other alternative, I'm sure I could get you one rather quickly. So, uh, just throwing that out there. But yeah, little standard size microwave here. 
three burner stove top removable little griddle there for easy clean and a little nice size oven good enough for about a DiGiorno pizza I would say my 975 truck camper I had had this same deal so cooked a lot of uh, fish and little pizzas in there there is a little storage compartment next to the microwave and this has to be plugged in to be able to work another little storage spot gives you a little access back there in the corner as well so you can utilize all of that and like I said if you didn't do the microwave you went convection you would be able to have another uh, little storage door over here all right so we got decent countertop space over here uh, I know that all the cooks out there would say that that's not enough you do have a little kick out table over here as well and then you have the table there if you like to prep and cook inside of the camper I'm not the type of guy that's going to cook inside the camper and stink it up you never know what's going to happen so I do all my cooking outside on the uh, little blackstone grill that I have and my current camper actually has an external uh, pull out uh, whatever you call it little cooktop built into the back of the camper so that's what I use now you've got these uh, sink covers those come with the camper well uh, single bowl sink it's not separated or anything like that a lot of mixed feelings about that some people like the single sink some people like the separated sink so definitely not going to please everybody on that one we'll please uh, about half the people but yeah, if you need more prep space, just throw them sink covers over and you got you a flush little uh, countertop here. Underneath the sink, you've got more storage. This is where I generally keep all like my extra paper towels, um, washcloths, uh, cleaning equipment, stuff like that. Pots, pans, that'll work. We'll pull out drawer underneath the oven. And then over here you have two more drawers soft clothes and then ac outlet for your little cure egg crock pot instapot whatever you want to use it for oh yeah almost forgot the key rack check this out boom all right so over here is going to be where all of your controls are since I don't even have batteries. We don't have water in the Truma system or anything. That's what it's basically telling me right now. Uh, so on these, you have uh, the new Truma equipment. Like uh, 2023, the 1172 still didn't have all the new Truma accessories like the Truma Aqua Go tankless water heater, um, the Truma Venta air unit, uh, AC unit. It's a 13.5 BTU unit with a built-in dehumidifier and then the Truma Vario heat furnace. The 1172s didn't have that up until recently. I think I had maybe one 2023 model 1172 come in with all that. Uh, 24, this one's got it all, so they did change over to all Truma uh, appliances on that side of it, so. That's what you're seeing here as far as Truma. This is gonna control your tankless on-demand water heater, your furnace, and your AC unit right here. And then you also have a little remote to utilize uh, the AC unit as well. Now you got like five remotes to keep up with too, which I thought was a pain, but you start Velcroing and putting that double-sided Velcro or something on the wall, you, you might be able to keep up with them pretty easily. Convenient center lets you know what your battery, fresh, black, gray water levels are at. On the fresh water side, you got 42 gallons there. On the... Uh, build sheet it says 45 gallon but on the internet it says 42 so i'm, I'm sticking with 42 because that's what it's been and then on the black and gray water you have 35 gallons each tank capacity on that as well so pretty nice sized tanks on these you can start your optional generator from inside the camper here if you opt out on that generator i believe that's about a five thousand dollar credit so uh you can uh option to have the generator or you can option to not have the generator. I recommend always getting it loaded out. That way for the next buyer, you have everything and you know they can't tell you, oh, well, I would have bought it if it had this. There's no more of that. All right, beside the kitchen, you've got your 20, I think that's a 28 inch TV. I'll double check here in a second. But it does swivel towards the bed. 
and it swivels towards the uh, couch with a little maneuverment here on the back. So towards the bed there, I think you got to loosen this just about all the way. Then you should be able to tear it towards the couch. Yep. There we go. And you can see it from the couch as well. So just a little maneuverment there on the back there with this little knob. Tighten that back up and we'll throw her out of the way now. I still got to maneuver it a little bit. But uh, anyways, moving past the TV, here is our six cubic foot fridge. It is a separated fridge and freezer. Uh, these, I believe, are two-way now. They used to be three-way. Used to be able to run them on gas, AC, and DC. Now we're working with just AC and gas from what I'm reading on the paperwork there, which isn't a bad thing. That's all I use mine on anyways. Uh, DC always killed my battery. Well, not always. I only did it once. So yeah, I guess always. The one time I ran it on battery, it killed them. And I have two 100 and yeah, two 100 watt solar panels and two 100 amp lithium batteries as well. And the fridge still killed it. So uh, maybe it took like six hours to do so. But when the fridge is pulling more ampage than the solar is put into the batteries, it's going to. We are back to having the mirror integrated in the door here. Therefore, while they were sending it with no mirror, so a lot of people are going to like to see this. Here's our bathroom. There's me. This is what you call the dry bath. It's a separated uh, toilet and shower. Pretty good sized bathroom. This one is pretty much identical with the 975. You also have this arm that comes out like this. That way you can take the little shower curtain out. So just throw that back in there and it's out of the way. Nothing to bang your head on. But I uh, got you some stuff here on the side for soap, well, you know, shelves, and then an adjustable shower head height. Let me get that out of the way first. And you can maneuver it up or down. Up oh, and Alrighty. Got a little bit of countertop space over here for, you know, everybody that uses curling iron, cur curling irons, that's a tongue twister, flat irons, whatever you call them, straighteners, hair dryers, um, single dish sink once again, toilet paper holsters hidden in here. There's our tankless on-demand water heater. A little bit of sh uh, storage right here uh, below the sink. 110 outlets, pull out drawer, toilet, that's just antifreeze. I know it looks like somebody had a really terrible day, but it is just antifreeze, no worries. Uh, and then over here, one more cabinet, a little medicine cabinet deal, and towel rod. That's about it for the bathroom. You got to chew a little vent up there in case you need that. step up in a handle you can take a run and jump into the bed here but uh this is what you call a true queen size mattress it is 60 by 80 inches and i need to move that box okay as i, I as i was saying this is a true 60 by 80 inch mattress so it is a queen size we've got our skylight up here so our feet can see the stars nothing to look at but basically clouds today boring boring day Got a little bit of cabinet space over here to the left. Our radio. You can also play DVDs through it. Just no Blu-ray, unfortunately. Another little storage spot above the window. Speakers. You can actually play the TV through those speakers as well. That's how I had mine wired up anyways, so I could hear what I was watching up in the bed. Little closet over here. Got a nice old light inside. Check this out. There we go. Got her lit up in there. And let's see what size TV that was. I thought it was a 28. It is 27 inch. Just an inch off. 
you do have a spot for a second tv up here as well if you're wanting to mount another one instead of having this one face towards you you can mount you another one right here and you have all the plugins you need up here above the closet this one is equipped with the auto satellite system you can get you a cable for the camper there is our cell phone booster all plugged in and whatnot so you've got your 110 outlet up above it there we'll pull up shelf over there and no outlets over here still unfortunately that was one of my main complaints about the 1172 is no ac outlets on both sides the 975 has them on both sides and i don't see how different it would be to do it on both over here but you know maybe they'll change that eventually a little coat rack here too that's cute okay that's it for the inside of the camper let's go to the outside okay congratulations if you made it this far glad you're enjoying the video we are on the outside of the camper now and we'll just start at the nose and go to the uh make our way around so on this one you're going to notice that they still kept the uh, double pane acrylic tint tinted windows um, I personally love these windows. They're far more usable. You, you can actually kick these like all the way out versus the old 21 model and prior windows. They had uh, the sleek glass look. They weren't really usable. You could only get them out about three to four inches and they didn't let as much airflow or natural light in. I'm not talking the beer. I'm talking actual sunlight. Got a little excitement going on over here today. All right, so up here at the front, you're going to notice that this one already ha already has the uh, swing out brackets. These are so you can get the fat butts underneath. You've got plenty of space between the fender wells and every and the jacks to get up underneath. No worries about colliding. You also have the Lance custom wiring harness on this one. If you take a look, this is not the same as what came with your truck's camper package. This is something that uh, we have to install here as a dealer for you that we actually include with the camper. All right, making our way on down the side. You're going to notice these patio lights. They are standard. They're not an upgrade. You have an amber light, white light, and then, uh, well, that's it. But they're on, uh, on both sides, and then you have your docking lights on the rear. Like I was preaching on the inside, every little bit of storage matters in a truck camper. This right here is the opposite side of the pull-out drawers that we looked at on the inside underneath the dinette benches. So everything, see nothing's closed off here. So uh, the heat that's on the inside of the camper is going to heat these outside compartments as well. And then your insulated door hatches are going to help uh, keep that heat in during winter months or vice versa during the summer. And then you have these awesome magnetic strips to hold the doors up. That was a brilliant idea. Okay, so all of your campground connections are going to be on this driver's side. You have your 30 amp connection right underneath here. Everything's so much easier to get to when the slides are in and it's on the truck. Yeah, you heard that right, I'm, I said on the truck. So everything is still accessible while you have this camper loaded inside the bed of the truck. 30 amp connection, city water connection, you wanted to flash flush the black water tank that's where you hook up to and I do recommend using two separate hoses for that so you're not getting nastiness inside the uh, cleanliness there all right over here this is going to be the dumps for the liquid and body waste that's going to be your gray and black water uh, gray water is going to be 35 gallon capacity black water is going to be 35 gallon capacity as well these are parking satellite connections here. Main power disconnect. That's going to turn your batteries off, basically. Freshwater tank drain. Again, that's 42 gallon. Cold and hot water line drains. And external shower for my people that like to give your fellow campers a show. Just kidding. You can use it for uh, rinsing off cooking utensils, rinsing your feet off, rinsing your dog off, whatever you want to use it for. Heated and cold water available outside all right here we have our optional onan 2500 watt generator 
This is uh, the QG 2500 ILP. Runs off the onboard two 30 pound propane tanks. Uh, insanely quiet. It's actually within the National Parks Decimal Range. Uh, has been since I believe mid 2021, early 2021, I believe is when they released these. Uh, you can start it from inside or outside and then dipstick and everything's behind this cover that you can check for uh, maintenance. And this is not closed in either. So if it's raining, it's not gonna hold water uh, and easy to drop for uh, main tank maintenance. I don't believe I mentioned this at the front, but we got all uh, four. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, shoot. He knew, he knew he was about to get slapped. Anyways, we got all electric jacks around all four corners. These are the Happy Jack 4820s. If you're concerned about how much weight these can withstand, I believe between all four of them, it's a little over 11,000 pounds. So plenty of weight rating there for this camper that comes in around 40, what? 45 4600 pounds and then you know you got plenty of room there to go with loading it up with all your favorite gear oh yeah if you ever need to manually do these say you have battery failure or something pop this cap off flip this switch down pack a lunch and get to cranking because it's going to suck all right so here on the back we have our optional backup camera the optional slide out covers as you can see here those are lifesavers you don't have to crawl up there and sweep them things off get the pine needles swept off and everything every time you run in the slides uh, that's going to you know create a lot less work for you and it's only like a three to four hundred dollar upgrade pretty sure can't be much more than that uh, so back here in the back you have this nice in-depth storage area you got you a built-in shelf also so you can load up the bottom and the top there this bottom i believe is rated for about 150 pounds it's not you know metal or anything like that it's a plastic basically a plastic drop-in liner so 150 pounds max is what you want to put back here got our fat ladder what they call that's with a ph not an f all right, so on this side, as you can see, we are four season certified. We have a heated, ins or yeah, heated insulated basement. So as long as you have the furnace going, that's going to hold in all the uh, hot air from the furnace or the heat from the furnace, and it's going to supply heat to your tanks and water lines and all that good stuff. We're certified green go earth. I don't even know what that means, but uh, anyways, we have a power side awning it is the carefree with auto wind sensing so if it's too windy outside it's going to roll itself on back in has a nice led light strip at the very end of it you can maneuver it to where you want the light here straight down or out you can do whatever you want there uh, thought i had something else to say about it but i don't i don't i don't guess uh, outdoor speakers so we can tick off the neighbors this right here is just access to your uh, Vario Heat furnace. This is our external hand warmer. On days like today where there's a little bit of chill, you got that kicked on, put your hands under it, you got you a nice hand warmer. These are our two 7-gallon or 30-pound propane tanks, however you want to say it. This is where we fill our fresh water tank. Again, that is 42-gallon. Two AC plug-ins, access to winterize the camper. You have a, oh, there it is, back in here to winterize. But there's our water pump, access to that. And then you have this little tube that you throw in the pink stuff. And last but not least, our Truma AquaGo tankless water heater on demand. And it's just gas, there is no AC. I thought that maybe this meant something where you got on on no on just means gas both ways so that's about it now let's go to the roof oh wait hang on external propane connection can't believe i forgot that this is fairly new this material that they have here it's a one piece roll on it feels kind of like a like a pvc it feels very tough and durable and then uh, fortunate enough to have the max air fan on this one. 
It's already got the brackets built on for the little cover that you'd like to throw over it so you can run it during the rain or um, while you're driving down the road. Uh, it also has the built-in rain sensing. So if it's raining, this thing will automatically close itself and it has its own little remote to it. We got the Lance uh, crossbars here for the load rack system. I've seen people put, you know, kayaks, rod coffins, rod tube holders up here. We've got the uh, Truma Aventa Air AC unit there that I was talking about on the inside. Our auto satellite dish, the cell phone booster, one solar panel. It is pre-wired to be able to do two, and we have enough space for two up here. I, I've seen people load the whole freaking roof full of solar. But uh, anyways, you can get two, and we can add that on here if you wanted to. I think it's about uh, 900 and something dollars to get a second one like that one's already got. But uh, yeah, that's it. It's a solid roof. I'm not sinking in anywhere I walk, and I'm about 200 pounds. So there we go. Okay, everybody, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I had fun videoing it. I'd like to share a little bit of knowledge and information with everybody. If you have any questions, you can uh, comment below. I'll try to answer as many of those as I see. Uh, or you can just call me at 423-892-6272. If you're looking for one, wanting to buy one, whatever, give me a call, 423-892-6272. I'd love to go over this uh, with you. And even if this is not the model you're looking for, I've got plenty of others way over there on the other side of the lot. Um, and if I still don't have what you're looking for, I can always get it. So uh, give me a call. I have very competitive pricing, and uh, I don't know a whole lot of people who beat me on pricing. So uh, I even beat some used pricing sometimes. So like I said, give me a call, 423-892-6272. Do not email me asking for price because most likely I'm not going to, you know, uh, answer you. All that does is give you a hunting license to go dealer to dealer. And I'm not here to waste my time and I'm not here to waste your time. I'm here to sell campers. So give me a call. It's going to be worth your while. I value my time just like I do, uh, like you would yours. Um, I'm not going to sit there and beg you to buy a camper and waste your time and fluff you full of bull crap. So uh, just give me a call might take five minutes to go over a camper uh, but anyways like i said this is the only well not the only but it is the largest double slide out truck camper that lance produces uh the only side entry is where i was getting at on that uh, it does require a dually truck so you're going to be wanting a 350 450 3500 series eight foot bed dual rear wheel truck that's going to be the truck that you want to pair with this camper uh shoot i believe that's about it again retail on this thing was like around ninety-seven thousand dollars. just give me a price or, or give me a call we'll get you a really good price uh but anyways hope you enjoyed the video if you did go ahead and leave me a thumbs up let youtube know that i might know what i'm talking about might be enjoyable to watch uh and like i said if you have any questions you can comment or call me and if you haven't already go ahead and hit the subscribe button uh, join this fishing fun family i believe we're upwards towards like twenty-eight thousand subscribers now so that's that's really cool guys and girls i uh, really appreciate that but until next time y'all take care stay safe and i'll see you on the next one